start, um, given that we've got uh, three of the shortlisted practices and the six, uh, six entries for uh, the Flinders Street uh, competition, and having been as one that's, uh, that is uh, uh, at the top of that list, do you think, and given also something that you said, Tony, which, Toby, which resonates to me, given that our aspirations are being so short-sighted, do you think that um, we are now much more uh, mature about our vision for placemaking and uh, the importance of uh, inf infrastructure as a placemaking a moment in the cities? Melbourne in particular. <laughs> I think um, I'll keep this to the Australian context, which I know mm. best. Um, if I look across the various jurisdictions, uh, I think Melbourne and Sydney uh, are leading the way in terms of a more sophisticated approach to um, uh, transit-led placemaking. And importantly, mm -hmm. the, um, the priority they're giving to d good quality design outcomes. And um, I think uh, as designers in the transport space, we've all had the experience that Neil described, where your client tells you, sorry, you've got to make it look cheaper. And this has happened to us on three or four projects when, you know, particularly during the GFC, uh, money's tight. And e even though it might only save a couple of hundred bucks, they want you to shift everything to galvanised steel and make it look cost effective because politically they're worried about uh, the community thinking that you're uh, gold plating. And I think that uh, we've, we've seen a, a lift out of that and we're beginning to re-engage with a more aspirational position. <laughs> I think that uh, Melbourne and Sydney are leading the way. Hopefully Brisbane will begin to follow that. I think Perth uh, started to do some high quality outcomes there, although it's a different context. Um, I think uh, Adelaide and also Canberra have probably stronger aspirations, but a, but a smaller pocketbook to fund those outcomes. So I think we're getting better. And I, I would uh, you know, commend Sydney and Melbourne for the, the emphasis they're making in relation to those things and, and the active role of their government architect's offices. Uh, yeah, I was just about to mention that. I think the, uh, the government architects are very, very important in this conversation. Uh, it is a hard challenge. I mean, I was at a workshop a couple of weeks ago where the one overriding expectation for winning is price. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, uh, the projects remain all about that. And, and it's really, it's got to be the government's objective to make sure that the, our cities and our places and our projects are built better. And the involvement of uh, the UDAP panel in Melbourne, the Urban Design and Architecture panel, which includes the Office of the Victorian Government Architect, has made a difference and, and the government is listening to them. And, and that needs to continue, but I think the government need to have an objective themselves in terms of what's included in these projects. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, for, for, for good reasons, for political reasons, the costs are you know, the cost that's announced to public um, prior to any consortium getting involved in their minds has to be as small as possible. But maybe if they co-joined some of these projects with a kind of mixed use typologies, so bringing health or social housing or whatever into this, there's an opportunity for these two things to interact with each other and create um, immediate public spaces that create a, a, a momentum. But yes, I think we're more mature than we were. But it's still, it's still tough, I'll be honest. And, mm -hmm. and you, you started with a question about Flinders Street. It, it is utterly, utterly disappointing that, that um, we probably all went into the competition knowing that it was unlikely to follow through. I think we all went in with a, a real belief that that would. But, um, but the ambition, really, the political ambition to follow through really wasn't there. And, and um, there is work happening there now. But it, it, it still remains tough. And I think you've got to be kind of a nimble designer to work around it. Well, I agree with Neil. I mean, we, we jumped on it as well, very uh, excited about the, the design opportunity. But apart from what my colleagues already said, uh, we have to align that Flinders Street is a historical station, very important piece of the historical fabric of the city. And somehow, I think there is too much uh, optimism in translating model for transport-oriented development in the suburb or new sites and using them where there is as well historical value. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the equation doesn't work. I mean, maybe we they, they have too much faith on the architecture competition, but once you have to deliver uh, revenue-making places, improve the infrastructure, but at the same time, 
uh, could keep in place what is the historical value, the vistas, and the ocean. That is a very difficult equation to solve. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised that in Sydney, the central station still lie, maybe or not at the best of the state. So I don't know, I don't have the answer. I just say maybe it's not the right answer to translate model for metro in the, let's say, in the suburbs, exactly, and apply to central station where we're historical, civic, and let's say, uh, community value attached to it. 